Welcome back folks to the Dell Futurist Community Cup Day 2 as we're all set for map 2 Sandhawk. What an exciting first map we've had. I'm joined once again by Kiran Shetzer, Nujibel and our pro analyst Nikhil SK Brutality. What a game. Man, couldn't have expected for anything more. What an Well, I think we expected little more from Sikh Warrior Squad. Yeah. His uh, definitely, because it was a 3v1 scenario, but Ops just played that rich like Oof. a boss. Like, literally. I mean, Pixel peaked every single one of them and just held his ground, held his calm. It's, it's very difficult to hold your calm in that situation oh, yeah. when you have like three footsteps just rushing at you because all of them were rushing. But, I mean, I think we failed to realize that, hey, uh, Sikh Warrior didn't have a helmet. Uh, and uh, I think Captain Pons didn't have a West either and Ops was actually decked with a level 3 so it kind of favoured to his side in the end and let's let's look at the scoreboard, there's been a huge shift. So around the middle of the pack there's a big yeah. shift, right? Danny continues his dominance up top with 650 points, uh, underwhelming performance but being in the top 5 ensured he still got enough points. Then Wikirex, Arps tied at 555, Sikh Warrior closing in the gap with 500 now, LXG2 doing extremely well. 465, Hydroflick 445, Google X card 435, Rotty 1390, Zone 1 315, and Game Rex at 310. And then the bottom half we've got LXG1, Blitz Zone, Cosmic YT, uh, Gaming Grounds 2, Robo Zone 2, Rotty's Den second team, ITGC, Gaming Grounds 1, and Rotty's Den third team. Rounding off the top three folks. All these teams are competing in the Dell Futurist Community Cup as their first steps towards their esports journey. Dell Futurist enables uh, passionate youth across India to follow their new age careers driven by technology, be it art, photography, film, and now, of course, esports and streaming as well. Now, let's not waste more time. Let's jump straight into game map to Sanhok. These 20 teams are all set for action for this last map of the second day. Shade SK, take it away. Look at the uh, flight path, it's all the way from northwest towards southeast. Should pretty much keep the entire map in play here. Yesterday, we did see early on Hydra as well as Danny S going in towards uh, Paradise. And looks like it's not going to be any different this time as well. Yeah, we got a super crazy early fight happening here between uh, Squat and that is Wikirex and uh, Rotti's team. These are two very... Uh, you know, strong teams, two top contenders for the prize and neither of them would have been hoping for an early engagement at least with each other at this stage. Indeed man, as uh, in fact w one more team, Sick Warrior, uh, yesterday they did drop towards Hutton and if people have been watching his streams that is one of the places he loves going every single time. So that does give some information for some of these teams to adjust as well. Boot camp yesterday was completely empty as well. I think that was uh, Blitz who were the, pretty much the only occupants who eventually ended up getting caught in the middle when uh, Hydra decided to disengage from Paradise. So this time it's going to be squad 10 that is GG2 going up against Rock. Rotti's team, Rotti again had a beautiful start yesterday, map 1, map 2, not all that bad but today they've slowly fallen behind in the scorecard and they're going to be looking to uh, and let's, make... Let's swap to the, the big fight right here which is uh, Hydra versus Danny, yes and Danny with a beautiful spray right there, QBZ going to try and finish off Prajwal where we have BZ and Hydra Flick pushing in, Danny on the high ground, beautiful spray down right there and almost wiping out the whole squad and Hydra Flick's going to move to cover, he's got two knock teammates. Yeah, there's one more player there, Hydra Flick, down to about half HP as uh, Danny is still uh, healthy with the QBZ. He's looking to try and finish up Prajwal, but Prajwal crouching in the corner. But Danny S, I don't expect him to be moving too much around. That's going to be a lot of Q given away to Hydra. Hydra, all the way at the far end, looks like he's just going to cut his losses and reposition. But they did lose a big member of the team, Accelerate. Completely he taken out. I think he, he won just them. finished him. He won them the match last time around on Sandhawk. So that's going to be a big loss. Danny S, uh, I don't know whether he's going to go up for that finish or not. But let's turn our attention back towards Camp Alpha as uh, Rotti's team right in front of Wikirex. Rotti's inside. He's heard the footsteps. Uh, he's, yes. he's not planning to peek just yet. He knows Ilok is right outside and that's going to be poor news for him as he's going to jump straight into Rotti's M4 and get taken down. One man down for Wikirex's team. Now the three of them are going to figure out what they want to do with life. 
Yep. Do they want to push in the Rotti there? Just holds his calm. He hears the footsteps coming in, pre fire through the door, and unfortunately, he walks straight into those ray of bullets coming right at him. Amrul, though, I think, I'm not sure if he spots out Seth there all the way at the end. Anon Panda is also going to spread himself out a little, and now Squad 10, they're in a world of trouble. They're all clumped up together, and Squad number 6 can easily take them out. I think they just move all the way south and back out of boot camp. And yeah, forgive me, that was a lot from yeah, GG2, not that was Wiki. GG2, yeah. not Wiki Rex, just because uh, Wiki Rex and Robo sort of had a face off, just a couple of pot shots fired and Ghostly Boy lost about 20 hit points, but they seem to, uh, you know, want to run out because they're in a favorite spot to like take the whole thing. They don't want to take these early fights and they're trying to move away. Yeah, switching Robo's over quickly point. to Karak Londa. He's got the flank there on to GG Boys. He spotted them out. Great trigger discipline while the rest of his team gets in place. He realizes Blaze has got nowhere to go. Quick taps coming in and he's going to take him down with a headshot. Yep, he gets the knock in and there's more bodies in that direction though. But uh, he's going to go for that long rotate across. Seeing, oh, he spots the second player out. Spots the third as well. Just perfect. Control on the spray, not good enough though. He does make it back to the safety of that tree there and he should be able to get the revive off as well onto Blaze. Karaklonda though, he's not done with them just yet. He's going for the long spray. The nade though coming in, I think that does quite a bit of damage there. He finds him, gets the second knock in as well. And now Somitra, I think the choice comes here to just kind of hold we it back. We have another fight going on here. Wades and Ghostly Boy finding team number eight, which is another Rotties Den squad right here. So Rotties Den and in another squad fight here, they completely finish off Blitzkrieg and now Wades has got his eyes uh, set on, uh, I think it's Parab who's stuck in the warehouse and we see Ghostly Boy pushing as well. Uh, Wikirex is gonna push in and team number eight just has like two other members, but they're really far away. So Parav's in a sticky situation right now. He's gonna be facing a four on one onslaught. Yeah, I think they've just decided to leave Parav to his own devices. They're not going in for support at this point. He's gonna try and peek with the VSS. Nope, Wades is gonna pot, spot him out and it's gonna be a VSS versus an SKS unless he lands three headshots. It's gonna spell trouble for Parav. Yeah, he's, got, gonna... he's got the smoke there to try and get out. He's also got a QBG. Oh, he tries to duck and weave, but no, nope, doesn't even manage to get behind the pillar as Ghostly Boy and Mab combine to take down Parav, and that is Rotti 3. They have been one of the poorer performance, performers in the event so far, and it seems like their run is going to continue with an early loss once again. Going to quickly look at the aerial side of the map, and let's see, it's going to move towards ruins and we just have google x uh guard with squad number 18 just chilling there and then we have rotties then at uh, <coughs> camp alpha okay i think looking at this circle right it would be very interesting if it ended at one of the bridges or maybe just the mountain right next to camp alpha yeah we because got that we would got really sick, we got sick warrior as well top right side of the i mean top right top of the map where he can play gatekeeper and get a lot of kills at the bridge but it seems as though they want to rush to that high ground uh, mountain right now and possibly hold that position. Other than that, not really, uh, you know, any fights that we're gonna see because everyone's pretty spaced out at the moment. So I think phase one and phase two are gonna be pretty chill. And I guess we're gonna see a crazy uh, phase four to like, you know, end game. Yeah, the question is, will somebody camp a bridge? Because you're gonna see most of the teams on the outside having to cross one of the other bridges right now. LXG2 is in a strong position when it comes to holding off the Pinan Bridge, but they are heading towards Zone 1 in Pinan, and then just northwest of them, there's got Gaming Grounds 1, and of course, Google X got just camping the Ruins. Ruins, of course, one of the most stacked drops in the game, you get guns for days, and they're going to be looking at taking advantage of that, since the map does seem to be moving in that direction. Yep, the three squads that are in the circle since the start, it's squad number 18, we have squad 19 as well and squad 6. six All of these yep. people were holding pretty much the same drop positions, what they did yesterday as well. So if teams have actually gone ahead and checked out what the teams were doing yesterday, so they should have an idea of what uh, to expect moving into the circle here as well. That oh, being said though... Here, Dynamic Jart has been spotted out by Hydra Flick. He's looking the wrong way, unfortunately only a level 1 helmet. Hydra Flick all alone decides it's better to live to fight another day. He is repositioning to try and get a better angle on these guys and get some more information. He's got a car 98 in QBZ, so he can hold his own. 
but he realizes there's only so much he can do alone and <coughs> Hydra is going to be very disappointed given their early loss going into yeah. Sandhawk because apart from maybe a few more position points uh, Hydra Flick himself is going to be hard pressed to get more for his team on the board. They have a lot of momentum yesterday throughout the day map 1 and map 2 today they managed to fall a little behind and looks like Hydra Flick is just going to have to cut his losses here and ensure that they do continue to stay in the middle of the pack. It's just so jam-packed right now. No team has really managed to pull themselves apart. So all the teams are definitely still going to be at the thick of things here at the end of day two. So Hydroflick definitely is going to be happy with whatever points he can muster here for IR. Yep, let's take a look at the map once again as we start preparing for the fights coming into this circle push. Uh, we see, I think, in the distance, it's uh, Cosmic team. We've got Cosmic with a 4X M24 set his eyes on one of the LXG squads, team number one, which is Flash, Crossbudge, Viraj, yeah, LXG and one. Dora. Yep, <laughs> Captain was talking about the bridge camping, but the bridge campers are the ones under fire here right now. The sniper is coming out long range. I think that was Dora Flash there in the far end, taking in a bit of damage, but... Uh, I think this is a fight they can easily walk it's, away it's, from. It's a 3x car 98 versus a 4x car 98, and neither of them hitting yeah, their shots did unfortunately. Get a 50 hit point uh, marker on, on one frost budge, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, it seems like uh, the call is from LXG to not fight there because they expect more teams to be moving in. And they've got quite a bit of distance to make into the circle as well, where there are more teams clumped up. I think that's uh, Brixter's, Brixter and Co. Their squad number 15, who's waiting for them as they move their way in. There is a drop not too far away from squad 15. I'm as fairly well. certain somebody got this. Yep. Ah, okay, package. Is. So I've got my money on Robo and Brixter. But it did seem like they were a bit late to the oh, party. It seems like Hydra Flick gets spotted out by three members of Sunny Meister's squad. It's got a beautiful shot. 57 hit points. That was a body shot on a level 2 West. But he has no clue that Dynamic Jad is actually going to push out and flank towards the building. Yep, FPP, <laughs> no way to find that out there. But uh, looks like he's just going to go ahead and stick the uh, first eight. Yeah. He's got a bandage now. Because he's got only two first aids, he can't really risk taking, I mean, using that for about 10 hit points. And he's gonna spot out dynamic. He's gonna wait for it. No, this is the shot. Yeah, there's a lot of patience coming in there with the car 98. Doesn't really immediately go for the flick, just buys his time, but ends up missing the shot regardless. And now the nades come flying in there. Hydro flick pretty much back against the wall here. He's supposed to head out, but he's the one to take damage here. 29 HP, one bullet needs to go for the reload. No, he doesn't. He just goes for the flick regardless, and he's just fighting with fire here and uh, Sunny Meister and Co are just gonna push in for the kill. Hydro Flick switches over to the QBC. Can he find the first? No, he can't trigger with the clean up and that is gonna be squad number 17, Hydra biting the dust. Yep, here we've got a lot of squads very close to each other. We've got Wikidex, we've got LXG2, then we've got uh, Gaming Grounds 1 as well, all within about 200 meters of each other, separated by mountains and trees and LXG2 has spotted out the Gaming Grounds team and they were under fire by Wikidex just a little while ago and you might have seen them lose Viper XL in the kill feed and it seems they've decided they're going to move towards Squad 9, Gaming Grounds' first team in hopes for some kills and to get on the scoreboard. And Seth just fell off! I yep. repeat, Seth from Rotti's And then we see Robo getting into off. a fight here. Rickster has the arm on him. And this is going to be another Rotties Den squad, another 222 hit points, and we see Void being taken down by Rongpa. The robot does it. have the high ground here and pulls out the uh, car 98. He pops the player out, goes for the shot, misses out onto Helium, though he's just going to straight up go back for the repeat there. Helium would do good not to take that fight at this point of time. There is, however, Brixter and Co. moving in towards that adjacent building there, and uh, yeah, I think they're just going to uh, give up on this fight and reposition. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of teams be smart enough to not extend these fights unnecessarily because uh, that's when things go wrong. But Void, he stuck around just a bit too long to keep the rear guard for Robo Squad and he is now being pushed off by MLG, Wrong Paz and Helium. 
and they're gonna see him in just a few seconds. There is this big cluster of teams southeast of the circle moving in. Meanwhile, we also see Sick Warrior getting the knock onto Murgax. All of them who are on top of that hill there. They should be able to safely get the revive out though. I don't expect Sick Warrior to be able to put this down. NGU getting in some fire. Kakashi does get knocked, but the trade comes in from Captain Pons. And and it seemed like Dredrek panicked there and then let go of that. Revive, he held it for almost six seconds and then he let go when uh, NGU got shot. So he's gonna actually get both the revives, not the smartest move, but okay, he's gonna reposition. But we see Adi coming up towards Red right now, and he's gonna get pushed on both sides. And unfortunately, team number eight. Was that team number five? five? Yeah, yeah. Team number five. Yeah. Now look at what's happening here, folks. We have four teams all moving towards the same compound and bridge, and that's going to be disaster. Yep, Frostbuds, the first man under fire there in the buggy. Just barely manages to make it through Flash. He's already deboarded outside. Frost taking more damage. He does get knocked down. Wimble goes, ends up getting knocked as well. MAB able to find the kill onto Frost Pudge, who are holding that ridge there and completely unaware. The LXG walk in. And I think there's another squad also under fire there. The Brown squad, squad number nine, that is from GG1 do get caught out in their own compound. They do have a couple of players spread out as well. Flash should be able to hear Sahil moving across, yeah, but... I, I don't think Flash wants to take the chance considering he's the last man standing for his yeah. team now. It, it, he's just gonna play time, slowly try and sneak his way into as many circles as possible in yeah. the future. Wades is get moving up, Mab has been taken down, Wades doesn't realize where the shots and nades are coming from at this point. And we've got more teams in the fray now. Bravo, behind the tree, Avoids most of the damage there as Wade sprays away his whole clip. Now, Mab, he's in a world of trouble. Wikirex, he's got the M24 uh, with a 4X. He's going to have to come up with a huge shot there. Bravo does find, uh, find I Am Ghostly Boy as well, as this is not looking good for Wikirex. These guys, they made up some good ground to stay on the heels of the leaders this last match. But now it's looking like trouble. Wade finds the down onto Bravo as Sahil returns the favor, and it's all up to Wikirex now. He's got to come up with a clutch revive and the kills. Yep, the two players knocked down on the side of Wikirex and uh, team number nine, I don't think they're gonna hang around and take this fight. They've already dropped the smokes. They can safely maneuver their way. They're not gonna be able to get to the bridge, but they can just easily swim out and back into the circle. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be Wikirex surviving for now, but he's got a lot of squads to go through before he does make it into the circle. All right, let's look at here. Robo being pushed down by MLG and Helium from Rotti's second cafe. Robo's heard them, he's realized what's happening, takes out the AK and BAM! What a nade and spray down for the double kill there. Beautiful stuff, ITGG is still back there in the smoke. Robo doesn't want to risk the loot in the blue zone as he starts moving. Eight seconds and counting as this progresses. 16 minutes, 17 minutes into the game guys, we still got 16 teams and 42 players alive. Just Map look, at, two. look at this circle, right? Everyone has to push towards that hill. Yep. And that is not like a... I told you, a hill fight would be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and it's a massive mountain that everyone has to push towards. And uh, Sick Warrior is holding like all, I think a majority of the compounds there. Then we have team number 18, which is Google X card. And then we have real Rotti. And here's, this is what this is what's interesting, right? Rotti is actually gonna gatekeep his own cafe squad right there, who is XRB team number eight, which is Rotti's den. They're gonna actually push into their owner's squad and you know, let's see how that, that turns out. And I think uh, the squad number 14, that is ARPS, ends up losing Scourge there. I think they're down one member at this point of time. So that's gonna be a big blow to uh, the leaders there. And we see a knock coming in as well onto a Void from, I think that's Robo's team. They no, it's Cosmic's team. Okay. Yeah, Cosmic's team. Cruiser, Cosmic, uh, they've spotted out Robo and Void. Robo's just about hanging on to dear life, but he's got to swim now. And that's going to be the end of Robo as Joker snipes him from afar. Uh, and they're going to, I think, share the spoils. Cruiser yep. gets the kill for Void and, and we have Johnny Squad Walker has actually seen the whole of ITGC cross onto the bridge, but he's still got his eyes set on uh, Diraz all the way in the distance. Yep, Is he, he going to spot the people on the bridge? 
He's just going to let ITGC throw. Oh, he finally spots out God at what the question is. Does he pull the trigger? I think he's pretty much all alone here. There is a few of his squad members. They can start firing away. God at war taking a little bit of damage now. Has and to. Acolytic actually takes down Sahil from yeah. the other side. Like, this is confusing. There's too many fights happening at, the, at yeah. this moment. Turning over to Acolyte, uh, he spotted out Sahil from GG1. And his teammate is up for the revive now. And I think ITGC knows. They're being shot at and stalked from the other side. Prodoge has figured out where squad to, or at least the general direction they've been shooting from. And Nandy gets spotted. The taps come in. Doesn't quite connect as God of War gets taken out by Johnny Walker. And now things are all evened up. Yep. And now, though they're on the uh, bridge there, there's Wiki Rex all the way behind the entirety of team number 20. So he can easily play his point sport moving in. They've already content with fire coming but, in. But from here's the thing. For Wikirex, a higher position matters just as much, but he finds the kill on Diraz behind him, and I think ITGC has heard him. Wikirex must now fight his way out of hell. All of ITGC in front of him. He's got an M24 and I think a QBZ, and I don't think all the will in the world is going to be able to get him out of this little hole he's stuck in. And what a shot on God and Boss. ITGC rushes in for the revive, manages to get into the smoke as Wikirex is forced to push in. Acolytic is right at God at War. He goes in for the spray, but Acolytic finds him. And that is the end of Wikirex at 12th. Yep. That is going to really hurt their standings moving forward. SK, what's happening yeah, what's with Hades? What's this on Hades? He's going to watch Joker and Andy right in front of him. This is Wade's gaming deja vu all over again. But it's is Hades going to take them out? Because it is a 1v2. He can do like two quick sprays. He's got the QBZ. I think he's got the, yeah, he's got the QBZ fully stacked with a compensator and a 2x. He's hurt both of them. But it all comes down to whether he's going to pull the trigger or not. I think he's just going to buy his time here. We've seen too many times people go for that spray and initially immediately get taken out by another squad all the way across. So he's just weighing out his options right now. They can I can see they are second place in the in this uh, leaderboard right now. Yep. Oh my god, look at this. He's he's just inches away. He doesn't I don't think he knows whether it's just the two of them. No, but look look at the, the squad, right? He's from RP's squad, so he needs to hold position rather than the kills because they cannot lose that big point haul that they got last game, which put them in second place. Oh, so he's got both of them in his line now and... Still no trigger. I'd say a cheeky, underhanded lob nade would be the best way to go. Look he's at him. Yeah, he does get spotted out. He takes a little bit of damage as well. Not a joker, but joker there with the trade. Should be able to pick up Nandy there as well, so... Played it patiently, but then again, patient doesn't really pay off that time. Yep. And meanwhile, I think that's God at War who's ended up uh, getting knocked as well by HK. And uh, they should, there's no contest coming in just yet. Cosmic, long range, looking out for more. He's not going to be able to spy, uh, find anyone, I think. So that's uh, towards the north. Yeah, that is uh, two players from LXG2. Who are uh, just over that ridge there is not going to be able to spot them just yet. Sadie Boy on the other side uh, with the car 98 does have the 4x and uh, he's got good line of sight on towards uh, Cosmic and Co. If they do decide to push up through that mountain. Yeah, looking at how this last circle is stacking up, we've got all of Rotti's squad, we've got all of Sikh Warrior's squad. Uh, we've got all of Zone 1 squad, uh, we've got three members from Danny S, we've got three, uh, we've got the full Google X God squad, so we've got all the top teams with their full squads. This is going to be one hell of a last circle, folks. I'm very impressed with how Zone 1 has adapted from day 1 to day 2. They were pretty much nowhere in that top half of the leaderboard yesterday. All of Today, all of a sudden, map 1, they were there, I think, towards the circle 6 or 7. And now they find themselves right in the middle compound of that circle. They don't need to really worry about these small micro engages. Don't really need to worry about the circle pushing in. Oh, ITGC and Pro Dodge both in the blue for this revive. ITGC, I think, just going to get picked up and knocked down right <laughs> as soon as he goes up and Prodoge has been told to leave. Uh, but he still got 45 seconds. Yeah, he I, still I get think he should, have, he should have managed the pickup. Because you see Google X got not making any sort of push whatsoever and then Prodoge again changing his mind coming back for that res. Because 30 seconds is way Oh, he had to go back time. into the blue zone to reach ITGC. 
And if ITGC has to cross that again, it's going to be trouble. And I think Sadie Boy finding uh, Cosmic YT there as Danny as his squad is looking to build on that momentum. Yep, they need to push up that hill there. And uh, unfortunately, that was Sadie Boy who was waiting there for a long time. Danny S. Over here, we've got Rotti's entire squad lining up the Google X God boys from behind a rock. Now, contrary to what uh, it looked like, they do not have high ground. They are stuck behind a cliff. They're going to have to move out from it and be exposed to everybody who's above as the circle progresses. But for now, they've got Google X God, uh, you know, at least blocked off on one side, but they themselves cannot go anywhere. Cosmic Whitey on the other side, his entire squad has got quite a way to go to get into the circle. Question now comes, they can't be too sneaky about it anymore. They've been spotted out. They're just gonna have to take this fight here if they are to survive in map number four. Yeah, we got Acolytic also, right, from ITGC. He's kind of in a good position, but here we go, Kobe. Seth finds Google X God, and that's going to give Rotti's team a 4v2 advantage moving into this. But are they going to aggress out of this uh, little hole they're stuck in? Because if they do not move, they're in trouble. Joker on the other side finds ITGC. Yeah, Joker, like they're in trouble. He beautiful job. He gets the knock, gets the kill with the nade, turns around 180, gets the spray onto two players there, and with that Joker LXG2 do hold on, but the standoff here between Google Eggs God as well Just as Just look at this, Rati. everyone's got scopes and big guns out. And they're holding pixel <laughs> angles there. First one to blink, first one down. I think this is like a big patience game. Look, look at Endover's angle as well, right? He's, he's literally holding like, a narrow edge, and it's a 3x. Good scope to have in these And just to put fights. things in perspective, this is the top-down view. Rotti's team, after this circle, they're safe for this circle, but next circle, they have nowhere to go. They are cut oh, off. Oh, and a beautiful nade from Sade, knocking down Google X Scott and Aramlov at 3 HP. I think they're gonna take this opportunity to move in and take the fight. The real Rotti, oh, he gets knocked down by Endeavor. Endeavor finds a second on onto Anon as well. Currently on down now in a lot of trouble. He spots the player rotating out. He does manage to get the knock onto Google X God there. He's got time for the revive here. Oromolov can definitely re peek back. That's exactly what he's gonna do. But Color Clown, the 1 HP, clutches it out. What a monster. What a play there by Rotti's team. I think they got a bit lucky there with Seth's nade that bought them that opportunity and they made the most of it, traded the first guy, traded the second guy, and then a bit of luck with that one HP clutch coming yeah. in from Karat Londa. But look at that circle, folks. This is not where you want to be. I mean, you got to step up, take the risk, and that is when Lady Luck is going to favor you. And that's exactly what was the case there with Rotti once, Tim. They survived and they somehow managed to dig themselves out and of that predicament. We see Sadie Boy going in for the kill on uh, LXG squad, but they are pronies. He's going to spot one out. Pulls the trigger out, long range, spray down coming in with the 3x. Does find the knock onto Joker. Nandi now is aware of his position. Can he get back to cover? No, he can't. He's able to secure the kill up there. Nandi, edge of the circle, holds down. There is a pre fire coming in. So Sedibai knows exactly where he's going to be playing from. He's brought down and he gets taken out as well. Wonderfully done there by Sadie Boy. And that's 10 kills on Danny S's squad. Huge haul from them. But that engagement has given away their position to Grotti's Den, who themselves are sitting on 8 kills. But very low on armor. Uh, they've taken a beating. I think almost everyone's gotten knocked out. And Sick Warrior squad, they lose Sick Warrior himself to Normads. Beautiful headshot, top of the hill. Adi and Captain Pawns uh, are going to be moving up the hill. And if they're smart enough, if they look down, they're going to see all of Rotti's den. SK, this is going to be disaster for the boys from Dehradun. Yep. Well, let's see. Rotti is actually... He's basically sticking to the... Oh, Adi spotted them out. Karak Londa is going to be the first one to go down. He doesn't know where the rest of the squad is or, in fact, how many there are. But now they know that it is death from above. Adi is going around to scout as much as he can. It would be hilarious if Adi sort of slipped off the edge and fell to his death. A grenade coming out. Beautiful headshot there from Roy, from Danny S's squad, coming to Karak Londa's rescue as Adi's own cocked grenade is the end of him, goes in for that cheeky five-point kill, and that is gonna hurt Sick Warrior's team's chances going into this final engagement, as now Sadie Boy and co have found out exactly where Kadak Londa and co are. Rotti's then in trouble. Sadie Boy again going in for the kill. He's gonna push down, he's gonna spot 
Uh, he, I think he spotted two members. Yeah, he's gonna spot Karaklanda again. Quick scope, not able to land that shot. Pulls out the 3x M4. Seven hit points. Mm, no, no suppressing fire, which is actually surprising. Sadie Boy taking a lot of damage himself. Does get knocked by Saint there. Do they have the cleanup? Roy spraying him into the smoke. But there's no one there in that position just yet. They've managed to move all the way towards the western side there. They managed to get the revives off as well. It looks like he's just gonna stick this on Sadie Boy here. And Roy is just buying time at this point of time. He does have that Groza. He spots out Sid. There are many more bodies there though. Free fire is coming in. Does connect on to, I think, 22 damage on to Anon there. Just buying time for that revive to come through. And then we see the reposition. He spots one player out. Car 98, unable to land the shot. He ends up taking a lot of damage himself there. There's and more. And is just holding ground. He's yeah. actually just holding the edge. And now we look behind Danny S. Yeah, there are more squads creeping up from behind. Yep, it is going to be zone one. Yeah, the zone boys have been going ham. They took out uh, two members from Sikh Warrior squad. Sikh Warrior himself downed a few seconds ago. And now they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Nomad has spotted out Danny as he's going to take him down with the QBZ. Uh, the suppressor going ham there. Uh, doesn't want to lose any opportunity for that, uh, you know, five point kill. Now we're going to look at. Sick warrior, he's got the angle there, he's got fear in his sights, he's gonna knock down fear, but FD God is gonna push up from the side and that's gonna be the end of Sick warrior. We are down to two teams, Zone 1 and Rotti, two cafe teams in the second map, final round of the Del Futures Community Cup. Normad get going huge there, does get the knock in, but he's being spotted out, has to go for a quick heal there. FD meanwhile rotating through, he's taking in some damage himself here. Does have the QBC, spots out Rotti, goes for the spray down, can he get it down? No, he doesn't, he ends up getting taken down. And Rotti now in a position can be cleaned up. Nomad though has already healed back up, he will oh get the second, he drops. Oh no, what HP, he survives in as well, just barely gets it in. And he's gonna be able to heal back up, Sid doesn't really know. There's one player behind enemy lines. It is a 2v1 situation. This is not where they want to be. Uh, it is Rotti and Seth versus... That's Normad, Normad there, all alone there. But Rotti's team, I don't think they heard him drop all the way down. He went for that Hail Mary play. I don't think they that, have no... I don't yeah, think they, they have absolutely no clue. And he's gonna slowly sneak in Rotti. I think he knows where he might be playing from. He doesn't manage to spot him. The circle is gonna start to push him soon. He spots Seth out, but he can't get the knock. They're gonna double peek him soon. Can he get the... Yes, he gets the knock in on Rotti. 1v1. He can't go for the heal, but Seth, he's so low on HP. That's way too less to take the fight. The nade. Oh, that's a flash. So it's only a flash. Back. It's only a flash. That's not going to secure the kill. No, it isn't. No, man. It's your game to win. He pushes no, through. Does he get the kill? No, he gets the secure, though. Saint, he spots him out. He goes for the complete spray down. And he sticks it there. No, man. Clutches it out. 1v2 there at the end. And Zone 1 becomes your first cafe team to take the chicken dinner here in the Del Futurist Community Cup. What a match, you know, it swung from left to right throughout that last two phase engagement. We thought there could have been six possible winners at any given time. And I think it was impressive play from Rotti's team to move from that little, uh, you know, hole they were cornered in, move out and then finish second. They losing out to a 1v2 engagement. We saw it last time with ARPs coming up huge. Uh, with that 1v3 clutch and now this time Normad with a 1v2 against two extremely skilled players. A day of clutches, pretty much, right? <laughs> I mean, that one HP fall, uh, that could have been the end of zone, but... That would have been a hilarious chicken dinner. You yeah. died because he f <laughs> you no, won because he uh, fell. The one HP, right? If it was like any other HP, I would have been like, it was exactly a, like one HP and then he, he finished. And I think he was lucky he had meds. He had meds also, yeah. And plus, I, I mean, think there were enough bodies out, around. He did take out two members of Rotti's and then he slipped. He just had one of those, you know, he wanted to peek and see if anyone's below him. And, you know, unfortunate. But, dude, that, it, it was so many random fights. It, I think the whole of Last Circle was just third party fights. Because, you know, Roy with that knock on Adi changed that whole scenario. Because I think Rotti's, Adi Rotti's team was done was if done, Adi yeah. was alive. Because he, if he threw that nade down while Karak Londa is being led, yep. uh, revived, that's two that down. That was two down and, and then, then he got it's game the over from there. Yeah, he got the high ground as well. But Roy, out of nowhere, pops the headshot just as Adi cooks the grenade. And unfortunate for him, 
that kind of like let go of their position, Adi died, and then Captain Pons got exposed as well, where Zephyrs from behind pushed pushed down, and you know, Sick Warrior got taken down. It was just so much third partying, you know. And yeah. you know, props to da Danny S's team as well. Even though they lost Accelerate at this at the beginning, they still end up fourth with about what. And, and this is what we kills. were saying, right? Even though they're not in the top two, they're still in and around that edge with. 11 kills yep. so they're going to still be in contention and given it's two cafe teams not in the top three um i think danias is still going to be in the lead after this but i think this is huge encouragement for everybody representing a cafe everybody trying competitive pubg for the first time um there's nothing stopping you from stepping up and making a name for yourself and that's what dell futurist community cup is about it's about enabling these young gamers from across the country to pursue their passions of esports and streaming and take part in this contest. And here we've got not just the winner, the See, top two Nomad as is a cafe hero. team. <laughs> Nomad is a hero. Like right, today, I think literally. fifth is also a cafe team, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. It's right? three cafe teams and two uh, streamer teams in the top five. So yeah, cafe I don't think any of us out. expected this. Yeah, yeah, cafe teams coming are huge on uh, day two right now. Amazing, amazing play, man. I mean, this map was way more entertaining. And even yesterday, I think Sanox seems to be like the map to go. Because look at the, it's like a total bloodbath, the first five teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like 30 kills amongst all of them. So it, it's it's crazy watching these guys step up. Again, you know, uh, looking at the rest of the, the pack, which is Google X-Card and the rest of them, I want like all these teams to step up because Google X-Card had the compound for yeah. three phases, right? It, it's, not, it's not like he had it at the end of the circle. He had it for three phases, but ITGC, they could have pushed them in. He stood ground for some reason. It was a four on two. I mean, yes, you know, there is a chance that it might be a four on four, but it was like, it took Pro Dodge almost 30 seconds to go back, heal himself, come back into the blue and res ITGC. And, you know, and they went uh, ahead and then picked up Cosmic Squad as well. And Sadie Boy, again, playing Spal Sport, took down, uh, I think it was LXG Squad as well yeah. as Cosmic Squad. Yeah. So good play from him, but uh, he again got third partied by someone else. So that last circle was probably the I think most it's all about who is circle. that opportunistic player who's going to see somebody else fighting and be like, hey, you know what? I can be smart and get a few points for my team without exposing us yeah. too much. You know, wait for the knock or pop up. But the amount of snipers I saw in that last circle, oh, yeah. my god, every single person had Rocky's a Rocky's whole team was sniping at one point. <laughs> at one point in time, right? They're just like leaning. Because it, it comes out of those shots. When Sick Warrior went down, I think he only had about 14 seconds when the zone pushed. So Captain Pons had to stay back and then pick up Sick Warrior. I think one of, I don't think it was Captain Pons, but yeah, someone stayed back. And what happened, what that, enabled zone to do is they pushed up they exited the compound which sick warrior was holding them down in they exited pushed down and then ended up picking up the win and the high ground again roy mvp i think roy they owe roy uh, like a thank you or because <laughs> that nade kind of put zone in that winning position but Rotti's then again at last place eight shouldn't have gone for the rest i think that's my personal opinion he should have held the rock because it is a 1v1 and uh, cruiser didn't he had a suppressor yeah right yeah. so Slightly lesser damage uh, compared to the compensator uh, M4 that I think Seth was rocking. He should have just peeked and taken that fight instead of sticking the rest down. Because the last circle, you know it's a 1v2 and when your teammate goes down, you know it's a 1v1. Take the trade because he was out in the open. Yeah. Nomad had no cover whatsoever and he just stood his ground. Uh, I think it was a headshot at the end there yeah. and yeah. takes Seth's helmet right off and secures the win. And so what's interesting is, you know, Dottie's team had an extremely disappointing first map today. In Miramar, they finished 16th. You know, if we can just quickly switch over to the scoreboard yeah. uh, from the previous round to show you uh, what the standings were before this map and, you know, we can see how well they might have done. Rotti, they were sitting in 8th place, right? Yeah. Now they're going to get a bumper 180 points from coming 2nd and then about another 30, 40 minimum points for all their kills. Here's, so that's going to be a huge jump yeah, up. Yeah, here's the other big shift, right? Yes, Sick Warrior was in the top five as well, but RPs and Wikirex were nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Right? So I think RPs ended up around 11th. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Wikirex as well, they lost Coastly Boy early, they lost uh, most of their members early. I don't think they had a good placement. So And Hydra Flick. They lost three members in the first fight to yeah. accelerate. So that was a one week, like you know, one for three trade uh, coming from Danny S's squad. So that's going to be a big shift right there. And Google X squad, yes, he secured a sixth place, so he's going to be around in the top ten. But Zone Rotti are going to pro possibly move into the top, you know, top I, I th five. I think Zone Rotti are definitely going to contend for a top five position yeah. after this. Um, Google X guard, Game Rex, all these guys, a little disappointing from them. 
Uh, I think LXG1 and LXG2 were taking turns doing well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, it's a bit weird to see which LXG is going to do well, but it's good to see both of them in and around the top 10. Yeah. And really encouraging for the cafe teams. Uh, initially, after day one, we thought it might kind of be a landslide towards, you know, in the mm, streamer's yeah. favor with the cafe teams getting wiped out. But, you know, in just 24 hours, these cafe teams have really turned it around yep. and are, you know, saying, hey, don't. Count and us and out guess what? Yet. They have a week of practice. Yeah, right. right. It's One not. Week it's of yeah. It's not the end of the tournament. We still have two more action-packed days with four maps. Again, we're going to be running Irangul Sandhawk and Miramar Sandhawk. So, hey man, I, I don't know what's going to happen now because you have now four games that you can go back and watch, see what you did right, see mm -hmm. what you did wrong, uh, and then you have the whole week to correct yourself and then practice. And you know, I think a lot more teams are going to show up, and uh, you know, just. Take the take multiple. Chick I don't think we have repeated chicken dinners yet, mm. right? Nope, no, we nope, don't. So it's been yet. four uh, individual winners. So that that's that's actually kind of crazy, and I want to see other teams step up as well because we do have some big names in here. Like you said, um, yeah, they need to step up. They're, that's a really stacked team, right? Uh, yeah. They they're always there, but in the top five, but they cannot close games out. Yeah. And they lose members way too early, and then ups again. Unfortunate. They it was huge clutch from him first game. But ups went down very early, and it was just Hades, I think, who held yeah, that his was ground. Hades there in yeah. a one v two versus a couple of players from LXZ. He, <laughs> he holds it for a good two, th two think, to three I minutes. Think he, I think the moment he got up, it was yeah. that crouch. You know, that's uh, what do you say? Prone to like crouch animation is almost like a second waster, yeah. and you can't ads in it. And yeah. he should have just prone and just continued spraying in that direction. Yeah. And you probably taken down LXZ, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to see how the scores turn out and, you know, I bet you guys are I'm, as well. I'm fairly certain Danius is still going to be in the lead, but not by as much anymore. It was just 100 points. But, yeah, like you said, he did have a big kill haul and like... And, and then so the top three kind of dropped performance, drop performance right? So, yeah. we're going to have the but middle of the you know pack what? from Sikori two to is six. probably going to yeah. move up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, we're going to see four. two to six much closer. Yeah. The gap between first and second closed down. As uh, in a little while, you're going to see the posts with the scoreboards go up all over social media. But we want to know, guys, what city you're watching from and which streamer or cafe that you are supporting. So whichever stream you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or a streamer, let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear you and where you're supporting the Dell Futures Community Cup teams from. I think that's it from today, folks. Yep. We're going to be back next Saturday afternoon with day three with Irangal and Sanak of the Dell Futurist Community Cup. Dell Futurist as a platform is enabling streamers and gamers across the country to follow their passions and pursue their streaming and esports dreams with events like this. If you want more information, check out the link in the description. That's it from me, guys. I've been your host, Cap Nara. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Kiran Shetzer, Nuji Bale, and Nikhil SK Brutality. We'll be back next week with more PUBG action.